our ARPA study session, if we could first stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. So first we'll start with public comment, if anybody would like to come up. Nothing, Chris? Okay. <laughs> and we will close public comment. And uh, we don't technically have an agenda because we obviously can't talk unless we're in public. <laughs> so this is one of the first chances that we can get the trustees input on not just what you heard in September, but what you might, what wasn't included that you're interested in. But we also want to give an update. Jason today went through with Martin and I of, you know, what we already have in the budget. So just to give some updates on um, the preliminary budget that we put through so that you know what, if you were looking through here, what, what already is technically included in the budget. Um, the first things to let you know, I'm planning building an ordinance. Uh, they did say that right now they're not ready for the drone. They feel that um, that's something that they wanna wait on. Uh, we were able to get a really good deal on the color copiers and scanners. So instead of 35,000, they were 14,000. So we were able to put that in there. So that's in the budget. The desktop scanners are in our current budget. Um, and the other future needs are something that would fall outside of the timing of when this money has to be spent. So for example, we all know we have the master plan update of 2027. Although we'd start working on that a year and a half to two years in advance with all the public comment, by the time it is done, it's past the date of when you have to spend the money. December. December 2026. 2026. Yeah, and this wouldn't be till 2027. So although that's something that we will have in a future budget, it wouldn't be for ARPA. And the rest, they don't believe that they would have the information available again by the time we would need it. So we kind of took care of planning and building, so that one's kind of good. Uh, Fire Station 3 obviously is far exceeding the amount that we got. Um, the one discussion that we've had is some of the grants that are out there, uh, we could have applied for a grant for either a, a new structure here on the facility um, for some of the police issues or for the fire had it been shovel ready, meaning you already have the architectural plans and you own the property. There are places like Livonia got a new senior center that way, some others because they were shovel ready. So what we could do on things like this is decide if we want to at least have the architect you know, like bid out for architects and have them do a design so we could apply for grants. So that's something that we could start on that. Um, and John gave us some updates on this one, the next one for the ladder apparatus. We wanted to know a little more of these bigger ticket <coughs> items of how would those go. So we, he gave us some information today that the biggest need for this is there's twofold. One is to save money, especially down the road in the future. The other is to increase safety because Oakland Hills was a good example. We needed two other communities to bring the bigger truck, the safer truck, so that we could actually attack the fire even better. Because um, at 35, uh, 30 feet, uh, 35 feet actually longer, as well as a safer bucket platform for the person to be in. You know, when you're thinking about at the curb, if the fire is at the curb, even if you're thinking residential. 70 feet doesn't always get you to some of the houses. So that extra 35 feet is just something that even on residential properties could, could greatly help us. So not just the safety from that aspect, but it lasts 25 to 30 years. And right now we have two ladder trucks that we wouldn't need if we had this ladder truck. So basically if this does get approved and gets used, it would be completed and built at the time that the two other ladder trucks would be purchased, which we would no longer need to purchase. Those are approximately 1.1 million a piece. So that would be at today's rate, 2.2 million. We don't know what it would be two years from now. So this one would be less, and it also would allow us to then sell those ladder trucks and use that money to buy the new engines that are also due <laughs> in that time, because again, people were you know, kind of pushing those vehicles down the road, so they're all coming to a head. So this one would provide safety as well as help us in future budget years. Um, the other additions, 
uh, the security upgrades, although needed, were not in that one, because again, we weren't sure if that was gonna be considered for ARPA. But the stretchers, the Lucas CPR devices, and the SOAR jars of life are in your current preliminary budget. Um, those three are in there, as well as the mobile data terminals. Those are also listed in the current budget pre uh, preliminary one. And again, this isn't to say the others weren't as important to make it in the budget, just the ones that we knew we had money we knew we had the actual dollar values, not estimates. Those are the ones that we tried to put in right away. Uh, for IT, the big one there is the phone system. I think our residents can attest that our phone system is pretty, it's pretty outdated. Um, we call it Frankenstein. Uh, it was made for a much smaller number of extensions. It was made for a very limited use. We are, I think she said about 300 extensions and it's made for maybe 50 or 60, which is why sometimes when you hear people saying, I'm calling and no one's answering, it's because the phone system literally can't take that on and just sends you straight to voicemail. So we've realized that some of these problems are because we are past the limits of what it can do. So we've kind of jimmy rigged some things together there, but it's not working very well anymore. So that would help with people who are calling in. I'm sure the people who answer the phones, like Tom, would be happier with happy. Happy residents as well. <laughs> um, so that one's the big ticket item there. There's two options. She doesn't have the exact numbers, but the two options approximately are there's a cloud-based system, which is less expensive upfront, but then you have an ongoing cost. So estimated $100,000 upfront, but then an ongoing cost um, for their maintenance. And Jason, do you remember what that ongoing was? Was it about 18,000? We're currently paying 18,000, that would be about 50? Um, I, thought, I thought that was the 100,000 she was talking about. There. That's for the initial, oh, it's 100 a year, okay. And then the others, if it's not a cloud-based system, if we hosted it ourselves, although it sounds worse in a sense upfront, because now you're talking about we have to actually swap out all the, it would be long-term possibly less because there is no ongoing cloud-based because we would actually be hosting it here. So that's why there's such a big range on those numbers. Um, but that is something that, that she's hoping is considered for ARPA. Some of these others, again, are things that we hope to work into the budget. Um, but one that is definitely in there already is the expanding the multi-factor authentication. Uh, and that's simply for cybersecurity reasons. It was something, there's some things that are too important to risk they don't end up in the budget. <laughs> And um, cybersecurity attacks are definitely something that we need to protect against. So that's already in there. All the rest she'd like you to consider. On the next page, in the budget, we do have the upgrade the police holding cells, again, because that's something that has to happen to make sure that we have secure locks on the prison cells. And also, the EOC uh, is the emergency operations centers. Those are in your current budget, because again, Safety and wellness is, is stuff that we definitely put in there. Uh, and the rest of, of information technology, she hopes, again, to be considered. For the police, let's see, we're gonna go to the numbers, go through the priorities here. Where's my number sheet here? Okay. So that priority one, what we could do, when you see the part where it says, uh, Cost for the dispatch and locker rooms, uh, basically fixing the downstairs, repurposing our current system. Right now, the dispatch is this big and records is that big because we used to have paper records, now it's digital. So, much like when you remodel a house, the space might be right, it's just used incorrectly. So, we could either consider again doing an architect uh, RFP so that we at least have something that we could put out for grants, or we could consider that whole project. On priority number two, we do have in the budget the smart boards. Are, they ended up with two, not three, that we ended up needing. Um, and then for traffic equipment, we did include the mapping, the GPS mapping, and the radar trailers. And we also have included the license plate readers. And that's that system where if you have the one camera, it allows you to, to connect to all the cities. Uh, let's see. Um, the, the water and sewer, 
have uh, have not been put in the budget because those are future, so we won't know costs, and those are part of the water sewer rates that we haven't adjusted yet. Um, senior center, the senior center, we currently don't have any of these in the preliminary budget because we're applying for a grant right now um, that would actually cover one, the parking lot has gone down dramatically. It's down to 400,000. It's no longer a million. Um, and the grant that we've applied for, we applied to cover, uh, it's up to a $250,000 grant, but we applied to cover all of those. So we don't know which one, if they pick one, what they'll pick. But those are all currently a grant that has been filled out. Uh, let's see. For Keeble and community, uh, we haven't included it in the current budget because we weren't sure at that time. It sounded like people were interested in that for ARPA, so we didn't currently include it, but that's something that that also can be considered to go forward. So I just want to give you an update before you all tell us what you think, just in case you were thinking about some of those that were already in there. So again, this is just an open discussion so we can publicly hear what you think. Anybody want to go first? I just have a question. Um, so, what is what is the process for identifying these things? Do we need to go to, you know, do we just give guidance here and you move forward, or do we need to have formal board consideration, resolutions, something like that, to satisfy the ARPA requirements? As far as I, I don't know if you want to chime in on this, Jason, but as far as I was told and considered is that if you give a guidance of we're really interested in this, this is an A plan, this is a B, then the teams know exactly how much time to put into, because some of these are going to take quite a bit of time to find the money and the, or the, the time and the resources. So we didn't want to have everybody going in on it if it's something that we were interested in. So I know Jason had put together something of if based off, I think it was Michael that said, I'd like to get some big, some little, some like a mixture that you had mentioned that if we did the ladder apparatus, the phone system, and the dispatch locker room, that would equal about 2.2. Uh, .2. And then it would leave 1.2 million left. So you've got three large ticket items that make an impact. And it leaves you with 1.2 on everything else or we pick one ticket item so it's basically without guidance from what you three think we were kind of at that and we couldn't talk to you obviously because of open meetings act so we're kind of at a loss of we know we have 50 million dollars worth of needs and we only have four million what do you think is is the aisle that we should go down because we have time to investigate these to do it right it's just what do we investigate in and, and to your point too, I don't think we're not making any decisions here. Yeah. We're talking about it, and ultimately they, we would come back in a board meeting. There'd be a resolution with sufficient detail to allow us to make a decision. Right. Yeah, like some you, of this does have a lot more legwork to do, as you said. So. Right. Like let's say that everybody says, "Well, we all kind of really like this," and I start to in my head know, "Okay, well, we got to start thinking about this," but then we actually go to the board and make a vote of saying these are some of and we don't have to have it all figured out one day either if if people think well we know we all kind of like these few let's work on those well then we can figure out at the next one you know and i'm sure you've had people reach out to you of what the public's interested in um unfortunately none were able to come today but there are quite a few people that call and email so i'm hoping that the you that get, get through <laughs> the ones that can <laughs> right. get through on the phone system <laughs> that I'm hoping that you can bring some too, because each one of you gets a different group of people reaching out to you. You know, our friends and family are different in the area, so I'm kind of looking for a broader base because we haven't had a lot of public engagement. So anything you can give to help guide us. Yeah, no, I thought, yeah. that actually your initial suggestions, I'm very much in agreement with, with the ladder truck makes a lot of financial sense yeah. and practical sense and safety sense. Um, so that, and certainly the phone system um, needs to be upgraded. It's a disservice to the to residents if they can't get through and if they can't contact the people they want to speak with. And it's it's frustrating. Um, and we certainly are 
We're all about providing good services, but if you can't get through, that's a very poor uh, initial response of you can't get through. So I think that's very important. And certainly in the, going with safety, um, the police holding cell locks, um, which we've talked about last time as being a priority. And then, so that takes us to some of the others. Where do we go from there? Um, the and do you have anything that's not been mentioned by the department heads that you as a resident, you as a trustee over the years think, gosh, I wish this would have been included? No, I think these are good. Okay. I All think right. those are very good use of the of the dollars. Um, <clears throat> but, I'm sorry, did you, didn't you say that the police locks were included in the budget? They are. Okay. Well, but that unless we vote on again, this is just preliminary. If somebody, if the group <coughs> said, "Well, we don't want them," right, right, okay, they but they're in the budget. Out, but they're currently in a yeah. Okay, so even it, with the so, if we were to put in first of all, the parking lot going from a million to four hundred thousand is significant. Yeah. But if we were to put money towards the parking lot, is there an opportunity for grants for parking lot? That's what we applied for right now. Okay. Um, the grants close next Friday. But that is for the parking lot. It, it's the parking lot, a few of, yeah, okay. we put a few. Um, because you never know what right. people are going to want to jump in on this grant, which was really nice. It's very, it's very focused. It's for senior centers only or senior facilities and senior services only. So that helps because there aren't a lot of townships and cities that even cater to the seniors like this. So that kind of knocked down the playing field a little bit, but you know, you never know who's gonna pick. Do they want something that's flashy, like a new fitness area, or do they understand infrastructure and they want a parking lot? So what's cool is this one allows you to list all your needs and they'll pick and decide what they wanna give. So that was really nice, because otherwise if we pick the wrong one, you know, what they weren't interested in, so we won't know what they pick if they pick one or the others. And then also, um, I think the idea <coughs> of uh, hiring a, a an architect to <coughs> provide some design um, plans for either the uh, fire station number three or for um, uh, the fire the police department in the, uh, the locker rooms using better use of the space for dispatch and in there. So I have a question about that. So if we can we use the funds to hire the architect, get the plans, and then if we submit for grants and get a grant, can we still count those architect funds for towards using ARPA dollars if we don't end up using ARPA dollars for the project? Well, the I'm assuming the architect's going to want to get paid. Right well, that's away. what I'm saying. So if we Whereas pay the architect, the grant might be a year or two later, so the architect would already be paid out before you're really because the grants that I know of the one that. Um, Congressman Stevens uh, was talking to me about that's once a year and it's the end of next year. So we would have to have the architect done though, or the architecture done. I don't know if they'd wait for us to see if we got a grant. No, but I can't imagine. But, <laughs> but, but the, you mean to get paid? To get paid. No, I'm not suggesting <laughs> that. I'm suggesting if we pay them and then we apply that towards our ARPA. Right. And then we end up getting a grant to fund the project. Can we still count that grant, that payment to the architect towards the ARPA funds? Like under the ARPA rules, does it matter if we just paid for the architect and not for the building? Not that I, not that I've heard of. Have you heard of that? Like you can do phases. Some people have done. Let's say they have a three-phase building. They're only using ARPA on phase one. Hmm. I, um, I don't think that's. I don't think the first part of the question is an issue because you, you've you've spent it, so you can yeah. prove you got the invoice and you spent it, but. We may want legal to look into what happens if so many years go by, you, you spent that money on the plan, but you never finished the rest of the project. Would that cause an issue? And I, I don't know that. I, I would research that issue, but uh, my gut reaction would be I, I believe it could be done because you are receiving the benefit by having the, Plans. the design done. Because even if we don't have it built then, those plans could be used five years down right. the road. That's what I mean. You're, right. you're yeah. giving yourself a benefit toward right. the, the development. That would be my gut reaction, but I can look into that. Right. Okay. And they're basically general fund dollars with that kind of flexibility. So we could spend general fund dollars on it, so I think this would qualify. But I look forward to the, your legal yeah. opinion. It is a good question, and that's one of the good one of the reasons why we waited so long. I know some people were frustrated that we weren't rushing to spend it. 
But this is why, because now look at all the freedom we have. N only one section of this would have been considered in the beginning, and now we have all these options. Um, so, and now being general fund, it really opened up the opportunities. And so no that reason, is a good question. We're in a rush to spend it because no. it's available. We have plenty of time to spend it and make good decisions. Right. Yeah. Did you have any others to add? That's good for now for me. Yeah. Yeah, I would say I agree um, with what Trustee Barnett said with regard to the ladder apparatus for sure. Certainly the phone system, but I did just have one question. So we were saying that the cloud-based system had a $100,000 upfront cost. Just a guesstimate too. We have to get you real dollars. And then yeah. and then also additionally 100000 a year after that. She said she's heard anywhere. Right now we're paying 18000 for our current system a year to maintain it. I believe she said fifty to one hundred thousand for a cloud-based, ongoing. ongoing. Wow. Which is why it sounded great in the beginning to only do hundred, but That's three it. years in, you're more than if you would have just done it yourself. Right. Because then that was my next question. What is the cost if we host it on our own? That's she has. To, that's, oh, that's they're going to look at. So they can out. get. Okay. We can start getting bids pretty quickly. It's just that with how the staffing levels are, I didn't want them chasing everything until we had a chance to know. talk about yeah. stuff. But as soon as like we start hearing where, hey, there's, even if it doesn't get picked, there's at least two or three people interested in this, can you please get me some numbers? And then that way when we do talk again, I'll have real numbers for you. Yeah, because I would definitely be in favor of upgrading that. The only thing that comes to mind is the continued costs, right, after the ARPA funds are out, and then now if we have this additional 100000 right, that we would need for IT every year, um, would certainly, I think, go into the decision of whether we do it cloud-based or host our own. But I certainly think, uh, you know, we're here to provide good service, residents expect it, and being able to get in touch with us is certainly a huge part of that. And the only companion I have to that, and I know that um, Director Lazat was looking into like the apps for the the we communication actually, okay is there so i'm super excited to tell you we have narrowed it down to one um they are based out of Bur uh, bingham farms oh, wow. so they're also local um some of the others yeah you know, we had quotes everywhere from you know seven thousand to twenty thousand um this is a local group who is a, a top a top group and they also live in birmingham so they get our community and they actually lowered their rate to become our lowest bidder. Oh, wow. So we'll be able to come you know, and, and have that uh, developed, hopefully. And it's actually under, they actually came in under $3,000. Wow. Like, so this is an amazing company who's gonna do this. So it'll be something that we're signing a contract. We're just gonna have them legal look it over to make sure there aren't any catches. And uh, otherwise, we're gonna start development in January. Hopefully have it up and running by March. Um, and it'll be kind of a mix of, I guess, I don't want to give an exact app, but you know how like um, an app where you have your stories and it's kind of like that click on Detroit or one of those where you get your top stories, but let's say you're walking on the sidewalk and you see a down tree, you'll be able to take a picture, submit it, and it goes straight to that group. Mm -hmm. Now they know where there is, it shows a GPS location, or you have a pothole, or you want to pay your bill, or you want to link to something, it's going to make it really easy so that anybody can use that and not have to go to the website as much. Or um, even like an ordinance violation if they see yep. something. They can just, they can upload uh, photos, they can upload a video, they can send whatever they need to send to us and it, that way it's right there where they are. Um, a secondary thing that won't be ready right away that we're looking into hopefully develop which would be additional cost but has to do with all of, also our IT side that we would need to upgrade some things is the ability to have kind of a, a member base for actual residents. Because you have people who work here, who come through here, and they want to know what's going on, but they're not the ones whose tax dollars are affected by ARPA or that. So when we're next time we have something like our master plan, and you want to get input, if somebody doesn't show up but they want to give input, they can now give input on the app um, so we could do hopefully find a way, we're trying to figure out a safe way to, for example, some other cities have it where I actually take their surveys because they have no way of knowing if it's geofenced. All I do is when I'm there shopping, I take their survey. <laughs> um, so we're trying to figure out a way 
to actually know if it's our residents taking the survey so we can get some, because I think a lot of people just can't come to these meetings and that's why we're not getting the input no matter how much we promote them. So the app hopefully would help us reach out to residents. So there'd be a general, everybody who wants to access it can, but then there'd be like a special members only kind of area. That would be under a second development though. That won't be initially in the beginning. But yeah, it's, it's gonna be a game changer. I'm so excited, you have no idea. <laughs> I think that'll be very helpful, especially these days. Everybody is very on demand and they're yeah. used to having a digital option. And so I think it's good to get us into the, you know, yes. into the 21st century. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, a lot of us don't even have, and I shouldn't say this, but I don't have cable, haven't had it for about 11 years. So I don't even get to see some of what we're producing out there. So as a resident who is streaming, we can actually see some of our own content too, which is nice. It can't beat the cost. I mean, it's right. Like it's yeah, it's amazing. I really do think they're being very kind to us because they're local. So, yeah, that's great. So the app. So I promise it's coming. Yeah, they're starting development. And the only other really comment that I would make for the remainder of the funds, um, I'm a big proponent for you know infrastructure planning. So I would say if we have um, you know some capital projects that could use some you know, extra funding, now is our opportunity to, to do that. Were there any in particular you're interested in? Um, you know, for me, not particularly, and I appreciated, uh, you know, the chance for us to give our input, but I really look to our department heads and the employees here because I feel like they recognize the needs more so. Um, so I would okay. just leave it to them. All right. Michael? Um, so I, uh, I, I'm in agreement uh, with the ladder truck. I think that sounds definitely like a win-win. It's, it's a piece of equipment that we need that will serve a benefit as well as um, potentially save costs over time. Um, phone system upgrade, definitely we need to get, you know, next generation voice over IP, all that stuff. Um, the dispatch in the locker room, I think that's important as well. Um, we should definitely use the money to, if, if and this is why I come back to that question that I asked, we should use the money to draw up as many plans as we can so that when grants mm -hmm. that require us to be shovel ready come up, we can pull something off the shelf that maybe is not a top priority, but if it's a grant, right. we'll do it. So, um, you know, potentially, you know, other things that we may do, other projects that we may do that, that require some, some planning and some, some architectural drawings, um, you know, so that we can be ready to apply for grants as they come, I think would be um, excellent. Um, on the IT stuff, um, you know, I heard the discussion about cloud-based versus doing it ourselves. At the end of the day, best practice, and as Gail called it, which is the, the term I've always heard it, uh, disaster recovery and government continuity or continuity of government, um, um, DRCG is how I always knew it. Um, we can't host the servers here anyway. If we do, we're going to have to back them up on the cloud anyway. So... Um, and if we're just buying servers and hosting them somewhere else that's co-locating, then we're essentially on the cloud, whether it's our cloud or the cloud. So I think that's important that we look into that and drill down into the different options. Um, I don't think hosting locally, if that's even under consideration, is a good idea. Um, so I would, I would be in favor of... Um, looking at some of these, um, you know, um, backups, government continuity kind of things. Um, I think to clear up, and I might be, she meant somebody else saving it on the cloud versus us saving it. Like right now, everything does get backed up and it's not here. It just okay. would be, we would invest in our own hosting. So when she says cloud, I think she means other people hosting it in their area of the cloud versus Right now we have some cloud base that we host and then we have some that are here but then there's backups every night that are sent elsewhere 
I think that's what we'll get more clarification. Okay. Yeah, from if we her. get some clarification yeah. on that, um, and um, you know, um, I'm hoping it's backed up more than just every night. Um, but you know, with the speed of, of, of everything yeah. right now, I mean, it, you can pretty much back it up almost instantaneously. And so. Again, I'm, I'm sure it is. I'm just, I'm just, I, I, so I, I think that's something that's very important that we look into. Um, and, um, oh, here are the police. Well, I knew I checked that off. Um, you know, and then the other thing I'll come back to is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just, I think, you know, some of these smaller things, you know, not that these are that small, but something like, you know, the the Milo theater training system that the police the police want. It's one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I mean, that's the kind of thing that can kind of hurt you in a budget process when you're trying to plan for. But with this money, I think that's the perfect the perfect use of that. So, um, of course, I would be a proponent of electric vehicle charging stations, but Ooh, um, uh, I'm assuming that's for electric police vehicles. Um, uh, some of the other things that I saw in here, you know, some of the AV things, 15K here, 25K there. I mean, I, I just think that if we can go through and we've crossed out a lot of them, either because they're in the budget, in the, in the preliminary budget, or because the department decided that they weren't ready for them. So I think there is a lot of opportunity to knock off a lot of these things. Um, you know, um, and um, okay. I also think um, one of the things. So um, you know, I like the idea. I don't like the price, but I like the idea of the upgrades for this room. Um, maybe we can. These are all just estimates. No, I know, I know. And I think people were, because Jason and I are so let's plan for the worst. And like for example, we our preliminary budget is, if the worst happens, we can still do this. A lot of these they put on there so that if we get numbers back of revenue sharing is higher or anything, now we know we can quickly add these in because we know. Yeah, that we we we, we have a a, yeah. a laundry list here. Yeah. Um, and then the only thing that I I didn't see that I wanted to ask about were um, and maybe I missed it in the police but um, are there any you know security upgrades that we should think about for this building or for the senior center I know we're spending a fair amount of money with security upgrades over at the courthouse um, are there things you know do we have there was one on here all of the best you know I, I don't remember if I if well, there's the one that's um, Access control, door lock, strikes, hardware, such. That is all about security. Where is That's, that? In IT? Um, the IT under building security. Replace access control, yeah. door lock, strikes, and hardware. Okay. I so think that, she, that would be something. She's lumping that yes. all in. Yes. So, well, but it's not, I mean, yes, lock strikes, hardware, you know, key fobs, whatever we need to do to, to yeah. upgrade, you know. So, you know, I mean, we, I know we have badge access and things like that. Do we have cameras at all of the entrances? Right. Do we have cameras around the building? Um, do we have cameras that can see at night? Do we have, you know, um, um, I know we've been adding to, uh, I'm sure we can always add more. Which yeah. Is well, good. I'm just asking. I mean, I, I don't we have some, yeah. some need but to if be there's, upgraded. If there's, yeah. if there's anything that we can, that we can do for, um, um, you know, that the need to, that need that, any anything that either the police department, the fire department, or the IT department thinks that we could do to improve physical security in this building and the senior center. Since we're already doing the courthouse, I think those are the only three buildings that we own other than the other fire stations. But maybe we should look. Do we have do we need security better security at the fire stations? That's actually some of these two that okay. were those. Which page was that on? Under fire? Yeah. Station security upgrades. There we go. Yeah. Perfect. So that one is, and that is a huge deal, and that's why we didn't include in the in the 
budget because we don't have numbers yet. Um, but each one of them, for example, there are people that have actually come into our to to our fire stations. Yeah. Um, now, granted, the newest one here is, is pretty safe. They had to sometimes install their own safety because there wasn't safety installed. So, and some just needs to be upgraded. Um, but there are people. I mean, we've we had somebody drop a body in the backyard of one of them. I mean, these are these are people live here too. You got to remember, this is not just keeping it safe for the residents and yeah, that, no, but no, no. they live there. So <coughs> that's why it's on there. It wasn't included in the budget because I didn't have numbers to include. Right, right. But that's something. Yeah, that, and then yeah. the other and the other thing that again it doesn't have a number in here, but I would ask the chief to come back to us <coughs> with is some of the relatively easy retrofits that we can do to make the living quarters more comfortable and safer mm -hmm. um you know we're we're bringing on more female firefighters do we have the right facilities for them um no yeah just so you know no. i i know the answer i was that, that so was a rhetorical uh question. no <laughs> um, I know. That is one of the, so equity is definitely an issue. And the problem is it wasn't that people didn't think about us then. It's that there weren't as many females in no, 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 the hundred place in these buildings. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So we need. Fire station three we need, we, You know, we, we, need, we need to retrofit. Yeah. Let's get some numbers together on that. Um, I can't imagine that that is a huge number to do something it helps with recruitment too. 100 percent. As a female firefighter, if you come here and you see, yeah, I mean, the, we want to offer them. We want to offer not, them the best yeah, facilities. Exactly. You know? um, so th that's sort of where I, where I'm at. Um, and you guys can keep adding stuff yeah, in. Mike, you know, I'm ready to take as many notes. I follow up with what Michael was <laughs> yeah. Yeah. to as far as the security and safety around the campus. Um, even having a an updated security evaluation of the auditorium when there's meetings going on. So that is this is, is everything here. Do we have everything we need in here to make it as safe as possible for us, for different committees, zoning board, planning commission? Um, whoever. I think it's in this day and age it's something that really needs to be considered. Yeah I mean and as you were talking I was kind of looking over and you see the phone you know lift for police and it's like you have to go all the way over there maybe we we do have two panic buttons. Oh okay. All right. They aren't visible to the public yes. but we do have two uh, panic uh, buttons <laughs> but and, to your point yeah. Have we tested it to see how quickly it works? Try it now. Cry. No. 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 <laughs> you know how hard it is not to do it? <laughs> you can't give somebody so a button tempting. and not want to push it. Right. Yeah, but so. so we do have a couple, but we haven't really ever tried to see, and that's something that, that we could test on. Yeah, the first day I was here uh, in my office as well, I was like, what's this? They're like, no! <laughs> so we almost tested that room. <laughs> But yes, that would not be, I think that was just there from a many times ago, yes. from many moons ago, yep. and it's just still there. And I recall when this was added and certainly necessary, but yeah. are there other things we should be looking at? Absolutely. Do you want to start on yours? Um, oh wait, Michael, are you? Yeah, I, I, I think I've pretty much uh, exhausted my list. Um, is there anything you want to add that wasn't brought up that you Well, that's why I brought up the security. Okay. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't see that some of that was already worded differently. So, yeah. but uh, it was just something that I thought of okay. in terms of um, physical security here at, at the campus. Um, otherwise, um, you know, I mean, I could come up with a long list of things to spend money on, as I'm sure we all could, but um you know we have a limited amount of funds so um but i think i think the the thing i said at the, at the beginning about let's um get some plans drawn up for different projects even if we don't have an intention right away as long as legal clears that we're going to be okay in spending that money um then we can have things so that you know when we 
have a friendly face in, in Congress that can help us out or at the state or something like that, we'll have something that we can take off the shelf and yeah. move I, forward with. And those are really big agree. grants. Uh, I believe the one, I think she got $13 million in grants from a few facilities. One was a $5 million grant, was a $3 million, and it's because they were ready to go and there weren't a lot of people that could apply because most of us don't have the architectural plans. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have the land, I got a shovel, but they wanted the plan, so. And I wonder if, if we would use the same architect for multiple plans if then we can get some sort of, uh, you know, better deal because we're not just coming for one plan if we have multiple that we're looking for. And that's good to ask. I don't know, um, that's good to ask. And then are there specific, uh, we do have a couple firefighter types here that might know, but um, I know there's different builders for different, whether it's a police, whether it's fire, so there might be specific architects out there. If there's not, then it would be nice to, s and we could put that in an RFP of, you know, you could bid on one or both and please give us a deal if you're doing both. You know, we can write the RFP yeah. any way we want, which is nice too. Yeah. That's a good point. I just, in thinking about it, I would I would move up in my priority list, the dispatch and locker room reno renovation in the police department. Um, you know, we've seen how important dispatch is to our overall operation, and we need to give them the best facility. The other thing, too, that it, it could help is, um, you know, we already handle Franklin, um, and right. people have seen the success that comes of that. We have had other municipalities ask, um, and we don't have the room to add more dispatchers. So right now we are fully staffed and we have 13. So you have your supervisor and then the, the four in each shift, but we don't have the ability to put anyone else in there. Yeah, so 100%. if we were to able to spread it out, then we could take on more, which would help our own residents. And we'd be able to reach out to those <coughs> neighboring communities that are interested in partnering up, which then of course, just like the animal shelter and such brings in revenue to maintain our services. So that one has a, kind of like the fire truck that has a win-win a situation to it as well. I have, a, I, I have a couple of thoughts I wanted to talk about first, which kind of drive what, I, you know, what, I'm, what I'm thinking. And you know, all of these are good ones um, that we're hearing so far. Uh, I, I can't disagree with. Um, you know, one of them is that more and more these days, uh, we're getting, we're getting the, the state and uh, other organizations are de-emphasizing revenue sharing. Um, they're sending less money that's with, with, without strings attached. Um, and we really can't rely on that kind of transfer. Um, so we're on our own. Um, but what have they replaced that with? There, there's a lot more grants out there. Um, and um, to be successful, uh, we have to have one grant writers. You're working on that. Yep. That's We're really hiring, helpful. Hiring, if you know a grant writer. Grant writers. <laughs> it's a great skill set. Yep. Uh, the entire organization was going to benefit from that. And the other is the shovel ready projects that you know that are that are that, that are so so more likely to attract grants than than other things. So that that's sort of one reality I wanted to sort of talk about a little bit. Um, the other is, is that, you know, I think 50 bucks is a lot of money, um, uh, but you know, we're, we have here about four million dollars, um, and that's a lot of money. But given our needs um, and given our overall, you know, budgets, I mean, it's about a hundred hundred million dollar organization that's being, you know, managed here. Uh, the four million dollars is it's a small, you know, segment of that. Um, and uh, so, it, you know, we, I don't want to go overboard crazy about it. Um, because it is important and I'm thrilled to have it. And so many organizations have a lot more, um, but it's not a transformative opportunity for us. Um, so we have to be very strategic about it. And I think what I'm hearing is, hearing is a lot of good strategy. Um, a couple of items that haven't been mentioned that I want to talk about. One is um, you know, water and sewer. And, and, I, and I, there's so many projects that are out there and, and uh, I've spoken favorably about those in the past, but uh, you know, currently, you, those projects are very expensive. <coughs> and if we look at the, you know, the assessments that were provided by Olivia, Noah, and Katie, I mean, we could just, just take two of them and we spend the entire four million dollars. Um, 
it almost would, might look like we, you know, there'd be we'd never see anything from that. It'd be underground now, and it's gone. We, we literally don't see it. Um, and so, as, as attractive as those may be, um, I sort of move those into another bucket, um, to a bucket that's funded either through the, the enterprise, uh, you know, pro, uh, funding of that of that function, or through uh, a bond, or however we approach those sorts of things. They're just too big um, and too many to, I think, put in this kind of spot. Um, and whereas the going back to the grants and the and the revenue sharing, whereas the getting some a couple projects that that that, that are definitely important, shovel ready, it could be a, you're just a really wise way to do this. If if maybe one day we have to bond to to build a ten million dollar new fire station that's desperately needed, fire station number three. Um, so be it, I suppose, but I certainly would like to be able to say that we had it ready, we applied for grants, we, we did our best to find every grant that was out there, and we spent years on it, and you know, we even did the design with ARPA funds. Um, so you know, those are the things we should be doing before we go out and ask for that, the, that kind of funding. So I think that's great. Um, the items that I want to talk about that aren't on there uh, so far, uh, were items that we've talked about a couple times that are not in the budget. So one is a, a strategic plan. That is, I think, an important thing for us to do um, and uh, is a, uh, you know, it, it's something we haven't got a, a budget number around, but if, if the board thought that was important to do, we you know, certainly could start working on that more uh, together. Um, uh, something that's been also mentioned is a chapter, is a a stormwater drain study, um, and this started. This is a conversation that started uh, last, not this past summer, but the summer before that, when we had torrential rains here, and the community, many many communities, were very seriously impacted. And realizing that 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 event, it's not really a hundred-year event anymore. It's more likely going to be a five-year event, or even worse that we could, as a township, uh, do a stormwater study to assess where the risks are, um, in part because that's something that is, it's, it's, it's a risk we're all facing together as a community, and uh, government can help um, folks understand those risks, um, something that really individuals have a hard time doing on their own. They can ensure, sure, but, but a study like that is not something a, a neighborhood or a, or a group of people could do or a homeowner. Uh, it's really something that we could do and, and folks and educate folks about the impacts that are, um, are that are out there and the greater risks because of um, the effects of, of climate change. Are you talking about the chapter twenty? The chapter drain? twenty drain study. Okay. So it's a little, that is it's a much smaller thing than a stormwater. I'm thinking about a stormwater study that we. Chapter it, twenty um, drain is what areas could we do where they're so bad that people would give us easements. And so it's not like yep. this one street. It's a it's a large area. It was so like it's like the homeowner that came in with hundred maple. Right, right. like right. those people so like with yeah. that too wouldn't really be somewhere that we'd want to. So the stormwater. That's what I'm talking about. The storm a, yeah. an entire township wide sto stormwater assessment. Do you mean the chapter twenty, which is totally then, different? Well, than this? I, not not exactly. Well, well, because the, the Oakland County would do a stormwater assessment of their stormwater drain system. We aren't I'm, looking, we're talking about where does it flood. That's where what does, I'm talking about. So the chapter 20 drain. Okay, I okay. just have a different name for it. Yeah, the chapter the 20 drain is, is, the then, is then how do we spend the money, for instance, that, that group, the, the, the individuals that came to us before definitely had a need, but from our standpoint, how did that need compare to all the other needs that exist out there uh, you know, in the, at the current time? Um, so yes, I'm, I think I'm thinking trap. Chap, you're calling it Chapter 20 drain study. Yeah, I'm called calling Chapter something 20 because it's different. It's um, a Chapter 20 drain. Do you want to? Ex well, that's the funding source to do something about it. Yeah, I'm talking more about the information yeah. that allows us to make yeah. the decision about how to spend those funds. Chapter 20 drain, and I, and I DPW knows better on what's how do you qualify as a Chapter 20 versus there's other chapters. Right. But the I just want to say. We already have, uh, because of the, the two big Maxwell Court and the other water cliff issue, uh, HRC has been working on acronym SWAMP, the Stormwater Asset Management Plan. That's and that's supposed to help us. I think that's yeah. kind of what you're saying in the beginning, help 
the township identify where right. these rain uh, events could be in the next issue, where those could be and fix them before there's a flooding issue. And which is okay, great because that's chapter 20. yeah, and that's yeah, and that's an HRC. They're says working on that right now. That's yeah. already yeah. excellent. Part of our storm yeah, that's so that's, that's I think that's a real great asset, something to be done. So we don't need to yeah. put it in here. Well, but but if you want the chapter 20, which is totally <laughs> different, then yes, it would be in there. Well, yeah. I was talking not about been this. started. That, that right. yeah. There's 20, no yeah. chapter 20 drain study that started, so that's why when those people came to us for a chapter 20 drain. We're, we're, I see we're them two all people the most connected. Most Should those connected, be the ones or where was we it the one it? that affects a hundred homes? You know, that's that's where until you know where the other options are, yep. we would have spent our whole fund balance on two people. Versus, which is there were, a different which, area that's just as bad? And again, it's different than the study that we're already doing for great. what I think you're talking about. Great, it's so a different study. That's the study I'm talking about. Okay. Glad to hear. I'm also talking about that study, but yeah, that um, so I'm glad to hear it's already away. going yeah. underway. <laughs> um, because as as much demonstrated need as the individuals had, uh, I, I think we were at a, we didn't have enough information to make a good decision. Right. Um, and that'll really help. Um, and the other two that were on here that are general thing are the document management solution and, and the scanning scanning of documents, um, which are s two larger projects that help manage the information that historically has been main it's maintained here. Some of it's maintained here forever, you know, building plans, for instance, as long as the buildings exist. And we get FOIAs and requests all the time for people to see uh, the plans about their homes or about their building or what you know, what uh, permits have been approved and having a better ability to uh, retrieve those things is a good service to the, to the members of our community. So those are the, the kind of additional things I want to mention. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that the, the, the ideas that have been discussed, they're still on here, that others have mentioned are, are meritorious and things worth learning more about. Um, what did well, you think? I I obviously love my suggestion, <laughs> which were what you just mentioned, mm -hmm. which is strategic plan, records management. Um, and those uh, are not included in the budget right now because, again, we just don't have the numbers yet. We, we weren't sure if that is something that the board was interested in. Um, we have some numbers which came back higher than we thought, so we know that they're significant. Um, so we will, if the board is interested, we will go down the road of finding <coughs> actual numbers on those. Um, so those are the first three that township-wide, I think they'd make a big impact, um, especially just strategic plan would help us in a situation like this. Yeah, you, know, just, you have all these needs. What's the first thing you should knock off? I thought that at the first meeting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I thought there yep. was interest for that. I think there was, too. We yeah. just, this is the just first time we could really get it. some yes. confirmation. Yeah. yeah. But I do feel like, like a majority was kind of interested in, in mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. things. So um, those, obviously, I, I would still love to go forward on. Um, I definitely see value in the ladder truck um, because that is, it's not just safer, but it is going to help us uh, long term because we know that long term capital just keeps getting higher. Um, it also means one less thing to break down. You're talking about two trucks replaced every 15 years versus one truck every 25 to 30. So even just maintaining it, when you think about our mechanics who take care of everything, it's one less truck to take care of. And can I add uh, that mm -hmm. uh, the, the point that um, Chief made concerning the, the way we use ladder trucks now and the ability to use um, engines instead right. of ladder trucks, people see that ladder trucks respond to all sorts of things and wonder why a ladder truck was because the resources we have are very limited. Um, and uh, sometimes they don't fit in the, you know, the, it's a square hole in a, in a round peg. Uh, this investment helps fix that, you know, round hole, round peg kind of thing uh, for as far as fire service. Yeah. So it's a great thing to add on the list. Yeah. Um, I definitely see a value in the phone system because um, I, of, for example, the building and planning. As a trustee, I used to get complaints. As a, as a supervisor, I definitely got complaints, and that was about two things. It was one, the customer service. Two, it was your phone system. Ever since we've had some changes, we have some new staff, I haven't gotten a single complaint about any customer service issues, which is amazing and wonderful at the quick turnaround, but I still get constant complaints about the phone system. And the reason I reference that, that group is because 
from 7 to 8 is the only time they could really reach the people coming to their home because once the inspectors go out in the field, they're in the field all day. So from 7 to 8, they get a ton of calls. So that's where I keep hearing, I can't get through, I can't get through. Um, and I've been down there sometimes where it's not ringing and somebody's emailing saying, I can't get through. So we know there's a problem with the phone system. Um, so that one I would love to see fixed as well. Um, some of the others, I think I'm pretty much lockstep with, I'm really big on security and infrastructure. Um, I agree that some of these things we're gonna be able to swoop in if you know our overly conservative estimates come in where we get more money to spend. We'll be able to take in a lot of these smaller amounts <clears throat> in the 30s and the 20s. Um, but it's those infrastructure costs of you know, fixing the security, fixing parking lots, fixing things that aren't as you know, exciting and sexy as a brand new ladder truck. Um, I would love to see that included. Um, and actually you mentioned the Milo training. I'm highly interested in that for a couple of reasons. Um, one, we have a, a team that always wants more training. They already go to a lot of training but to be able to learn in that style, especially when you're thinking about some of our younger officers that are coming in, they're used to learning in a video game style environment. But what's really neat is it's a supervisor that's running this. So it's not like you go in and it's a route and you memorize on a video game, oh, this is gonna pop up, this is gonna pop up. Every time they go in, it's different. So the person can say, oh, he's, he or she isn't so great on this, let me throw a few more of that at them. And the Milo thing is like a virtual reality training, yes. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, it's a, an amazing system. And then it also is, we did have a really good young officer that we hired <clears throat> on probation though. This was a great person on paper, a great person, knew exactly what to do, but would freeze up, went out in the search. So we couldn't keep that person. That's a danger to the, to himself and to the community. So we lost a really good person that had he had a better training option of he needed more training than what, what the typical officer was, he could have gotten there. Maybe this is the way, maybe visually is how they learn. You know, So this kind of helps with those visual learners and the younger ones that just learn in a different way. But it's a really neat system. We're also going to try and apply for a grant um, through our MMRMA. There is a chance that because of the risk that it would reduce when you talk about an officer being ready at all times, um, there's a chance nobody has, has done it yet. Nobody has been awarded it yet because nobody's asked for it yet. So they did say at least try. But again, if it's great to be the first, but if they say no, it would still be something that I'd love to be included because you can never get enough training. Um, so yeah, I love the Milo system. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, otherwise, I think I'm pretty much in accordance with what all of you guys were saying of you know, IT security, that definitely also making sure that our IT is safe. Uh -huh. um, we have a great staff here where Will in particular has fought off. We have had some try and attack. He has been able to fight those off. But, you know, one person against the world gets a little overwhelming. So uh, as much security as we can bring in for that, the better. Um, the EV charging stations were actually, if we were considering a fleet, we can't even consider a fleet until you have EV chargers, so it wouldn't be for the public at first. Sorry about that. <laughs> it would be for Please if speak. we did switch. Um, I'd love to be a leader in that area. Everyone would, would look at Tasha. Look, you have you, you're you a leader in electric to plug vehicles because you're not part of the fleet. No, I get it. <laughs> uh, I, I could become a West police Winfield officer. Maybe one that they make money off. Yeah, I'm too old. Well, eventually, yeah, we would get to that. But <laughs> the problem is, if you don't have enough for your own fleet then people leave their car there and you can't plug in your, your vehicles. So we're not ready to jump to the police yet. That's too, um, that's too new. And they don't really have a lot of vehicle choices, to be honest, yet for police. But the inspectors, who you're, there's probably 13 to 20 that are those Ford Escapes, the Ford Explorers, there are some out there. But before we can even take on one of those, we have to have a charging station. So that's why it's there. I'm not sure that we have the numbers right away. We've been to a lot of different meetings and we're gonna have some people come out to sit with Noah and myself and others to look at how many we have, what it would cost, because there are grants. So the reason I didn't include in the budget is because it's DTE and um, Oakland County that are going to come and meet with us and they both have grants available. So I'm hoping that those are provided through that. So that's why it wasn't included in the budget. But. Yeah, and that is to start there, but then yes, you basically, you could have one out for the public, and then you, you charge a little bit higher rate than what you would 
use yourself so that you can make something off of it. It's not going to change the, the system much, but it also helps people. Um, so that, that one is interesting. I just don't know. I, I don't know that we'll need ARPA because hopefully we'll get grants for that. Um, the rest is, yeah, just the safety for me. Uh, there was, I think there was one thing in here that was in IT. Oh, the network switch replacements. Again, doesn't sound super exciting. Doesn't sound super, super sexy because it's network switches. But these are about 15 years old um, because when the campus was re redone, all the different network switches for all the buildings were done at that time in that area. But they're 15 years old. They're past due. You're supposed to replace them about every 10 years. And um, typically, since these are no longer available, this, these switches, if you switch one, you got to switch that whole group. So that's why it's about 150 to switch that whole section and a little bit more. So it's not exciting, but it's about IT safety. So that's one that I would like to. But otherwise, I liked everything you, that you've all kind of mentioned as well. And since I got to add the ones I like, I already put on what my ideas were. <laughs> um, so I actually just had one um, follow-up question. As you were talking about um, PBO, I'm wondering if there's any discussion about streamlining to allow people to do things online, like apply for the permits online, or uh, their zoning if they have to apply for a variance. Yeah. They now can apply for some things online. That was through, so BSNA is, um, some of our areas are direct, some are through the county, so we were limited in some ways of what we could do. PBO is now direct with their own software uh, so that we could key in. We've already keyed in where now people can apply online for, for some things. We're also going to start making it where you don't have to call in for appointments where it's gonna be like cal Calendly or any of those where these are the open appointments, yep. pick the one you want, which will really help because then it'll already kind of put it all into, right now, everything's so paper-based. Everything here, it, it's just because that's all the technology that they could afford it. And we've never had an influx of $4 million to be able to do this. But if we could streamline that, it not only helps the residents who don't have to now call in mm -hmm. and they can pick their times, sorry, they can also pick their times. It also helps the person setting their date because there is <clears throat> some software that will help map your ride too. So, okay, these people have picked this times and this is the best way to do that route because they would pick like 8 to 12, 12 to 4, and then based on where the, it, there's some amazing software out there to make life easier for both sides. So that is something that I would love if you were interested in that as well. Yeah, There absolutely. are ways that we can add these yeah. kind of things onto our software. Yeah, yeah that would help. I yeah. would be very or interested. We use Calendly for our passport appointments and people have really responded positively for it. Yeah. Well, that, that would be <laughs> great. And it reduces calls to the township, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. having to right. call to schedule mm -hmm. the passport appointment, they just go right online and yep. it makes it easier for staff. It generates a, a bunch of emails. We can send reminders, instructions, documents, and yes. it, you know, it's really, mm -hmm. it's a good system. Yeah. Well worth a little bit of money it costs. Yeah. Yeah. Any other, anything else you guys want to, it's not often we get to get any information and talk about this right now. So anything you can throw at us, let us know. I'm not allowed to pull and say, is there anything in particular, right? Other than like, mm -hmm. I'm not allowed to say, hey, what do you think about this? <laughs> so I'll just kind of run with this whole list. <laughs> All right. um, if there's some that I can bring with the actual dollar <clears throat> amounts, um, am I allowed to at least see what's your top five? Well, you can ask everybody. Like, what's their top five? Yeah. All right. I mean, so that's kind of the purpose, I think. Yeah, but meeting, I wasn't sure how but, much I'm allowed to ask. You, you can't make decisions on it. Right. But, uh, so what would be, a staff, or Trustee Fiki, what would be your top five? So I would say um, certainly st the strategic plan, and I appreciate um, both you and Clark Brook for bringing that up, because I, I do think that that will help this administration and future administrations to know the need. And so when you get a laundry list like this from the department heads, it's a little bit easier to identify identify um, you know where where we should start so a strategic plan um, certainly and I don't know if I can bundle this all into one but <laughs> as far as the electronic upgrade so the electronic filing fixing the phone system I don't know if that's going to be two separate or if we could put that under the same umbrella you can give me six <laughs> 
Two you can separate. give me six. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I would also say the ladder apparatus. I'm certainly um, very much in favor of that. And um, and I would also add the um, the plans for the architects for for the different um, fire station and any upgrades that we needed for the police as well, the locker rooms and the dispatch center. Michael, um, this is just to narrow me down. For yeah, the first time so I think um, um, similar to what Stephanie said, um, probably you know the ladder truck, the the disaster recovery, continuity of government stuff um, that we should look at. Um, the planning for you know architectural drawings and things like that for various projects which would include a, the dispatch and locker room center dispatch center and locker room um, renovations um, any physical security improvements to this building um, and I'm also going to include um, the upgrades to this room catch up okay <laughs> hey, maybe if we put some recliners and a bar in back <laughs> might get some people to come. Yeah. that's a great idea right awesome neil uh ladder truck strategic plan uh phone system and i agree with uh, stephanie just do a, a phone system and um include with that just uh upgrade to the software system which would include scheduling and any other software we can uh, certainly that is needed we should look at that um, architectural designs for the uh, dispatch and also get a price for uh, a fire station number three so it puts us in a position to apply for grants for both and security upgrades to the campus of course, including this uh, auditorium. Digital upgrades to the auditorium. Okay. Infrastructure uh, design. You're making your know, design ready plans for the fire department, police department. I'm making that as one. Yeah, I, I was <laughs> linking that together because I figure but, we'll somehow put the bid. Mm -hmm. all Let's in see one. if we can get it. Uh, chapter 20 drain study strategic plan and the ladder truck okay I feel like I have some that doesn't mean I'm against say. any other items correct you know, know this but helps but let's say you know each each time I want to kind of bring you stuff so this way I can say okay th three to four of them said this you start looking at this you start so this gives me some ideas of who to go to for some answers for us. Excellent. I really appreciate this, everybody. This is Very helpful. more helpful than you can imagine. <laughs> do we need a motion to adjourn? No motion. I think so. We do, don't we? Um, typically, you have a motion to adjourn. Yeah. Even oh. the study sessions you do? So I should make a motion now? Oh, OK. <laughs> it was an actual meeting. We're not meeting. supposed to vote at a study session. We met. OK. <laughs> I, 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 we can leave. I think. <laughs> okay, just leave. Better to make a motion that we don't need than not. I move we adjourn. Motion by Clerk Brook. Support. Support. Support by Trustee Vicky. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passes. Thank you, guys.